many hours um, in um, serving this week. This morning as we are going, continue through Psalm 34. And we come up to that verse that we just uh, sung and that the Lord is close and that the Lord is near when we're broken heart or when we've suffered something of loss um, and how, uh, how more real to that even is this morning as Walt's here, the loss of his brother passed away um, uh, yesterday. I, I don't think Eileen and Ron are here today, but Eileen's mum who passed away last week and whose uh, funeral is this week and those of you who have lost loved ones, whether it's just near or during COVID, during the last couple of months or during the last couple of years, because uh, it's, it, it's not easy to walk through. And it's not like you can just snap your fingers and you come out of it, but the loss, the loss uh, causes us to have grief. But then this morning, it may not even be the loss of a loved one. It could be a loss of a relationship, a, a loss of job, a loss of finances, a, a, a loss in a marriage today that brings brokenness and heartache. And so as we open up the scripture this morning, David will speak to us. David knew what it was like to suffer loss. He knew what it was like to go through situations of brokenness, of disappointment, of discouragement. He knew what it was like to be crushed in spirit. And yet in this beautiful psalm where he starts off, I will bless the Lord, he talks about a God who comes close, a God who comes near. As God Yahweh is the covenant Lord. He doesn't need us, as I said a couple of weeks ago. He doesn't need us. He doesn't need anything, but he wants us. And he sent Jesus to bring us back into relationship with him because he's the eternal God. He's the relational God. He's a God who's present with us, here with us. He walks with us. He talks with us. And he's a God who's the unchanging God in a world where everything changes. From day to day, things can change in your life and can bring heartache, can bring disappointment, can bring shock. And yet in the middle of that, we serve a God, we love a God who does not change and is unchanging and who says, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. Yeah. We started off several weeks ago, seems like ages ago, uh, at the beginning of that psalm when David says, I will exalt you. I will praise you. I will bow my knees before you. I will bless you at all times, not when it is always well, but at all times. Yeah. He is worthy. He is our helper. David encourages us to taste of the Lord's goodness, of his mercy, of his love. David said, seek him. You will not be disappointed. There's a challenge for us as we finish this year and go in the next. Seek him, you will not be disappointed. As we trust him, we will not lack any good thing. Ethan last week talked about the free, fear and reverence. We come before God. Do good. Keep your tongue from evil. Seek peace and pursue it. Judith and I were listening to a podcast uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago. I'm not too sure of the lady's name. And she made this comment, and I knew uh, what was coming up. I knew I was speaking today, and it, it just so resonated in my heart. She said this, we live in a world that is full of sadness, that is full of grief, it's full of heartache, there are tears, there is pain, there is brokenness, and there is loss. It shouldn't be that way. But it is because of the fall of man, because of the fall of Adam. But through the cross of Jesus, and more so through the resurrection of Jesus, he has come to bring us hope into a, into a world that's hurting, that's suffering loss, that's suffering pain, that's suffering grief. He comes to bring hope into our pain-filled world, he comes to bring hope into your pain-filled life. Otherwise, it would be just useless. But because of the resurrection of Jesus, he comes to bring hope. God is not removed from our pain. He knows what it is to suffer loss. Satan took fur to the angels and left heaven. Jesus he, the God gave up his son, Jesus, 
He knew what it was like for us to suffer loss. Jesus himself lost one of his disciples. And in the middle of that, the God who identifies with our pain, who identifies with our brokenness, our heartache, our loss, in the middle of that, he comes to us. And literally, he chooses to come to us, to be with us, to walk with us. The beautiful Psalm 90, if you read Psalm 90, it's the Psalm of Moses, the prayer of Moses. Moses talks about that God was the God before all all time, but he came from the everlasting, somewhere light years out there. He came from the everlasting to be with us, to dwell with us. And he sent Jesus from the everlasting, this God, who doesn't need anything but wants us, has come from the everlasting to dwell with us and to be with us. Because of Jesus, there is hope for the broken heart. And because of Jesus, he is the hope of, the bro- of broken hearts this morning. Let's, um, let's, let's uh, Rosie, if you can put up, let's read. We're going to read from verse 1 this morning. Why don't you read with me? And again, this is powerful because we're reading the Scripture. We're reading the Scripture. Let's read it together. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man or the woman who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, Listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and save such as have a contrite spirit. Father, we just bring our hearts and spirits before you, Lord. You come to touch us afresh. You come to speak to us afresh. We open up our hearts to just allow you to Just bring your healing, bring your life into our lives today in Jesus' name. I'm going to read those, that psalm, that last psalm, the last verse there, Psalm 34, 18. I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. I'm going to read it from the Message Translation. I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. The The New Living Translation says this, The Lord is near to those who are, the Lord is, sorry, is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those who are crushed in spirit. The message says, if your heart is broken, you'll find right God right there. If you're kicked in the gut, he'll help you catch your breath. That's a beautiful picture. And the last one, the Lord is close to all whose hearts are crushed by pain and he's always ready to restore the repentant one. David speaks to us and encourages us today. He said his face is towards the righteous, those following him. Today, if you're here or you're watching online, you can make that decision today to follow him, to commit your life to him, to to live for him. David says his eyes watch over them. His ears are open to the cry. He hears their call for help. Our question oftentimes in the middle of pain or in the middle of brokenness or in the middle of loss or when we've been crushed, 
we ask this question, does God really hear me? Does God really care? Does God see where I'm at? Does God see what is happening to me? I remember to him, I, um, in the middle of the night, I remember to him I read to you about two years ago, and it just came back to me. The title of the hymn is, Does Jesus Care? And it says this, Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too, deep, too deeply for joy or song? As the burdens press and the caves distress, cares distress and the way grows weary and long, oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary and the long nights dreary, I know my Saviour cares. The second verse says, Does Jesus care when my way is dark with a nameless dread and fear as the daylight fades into, into deep night shades? Do, listen, does he care enough to be near? Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary and the long nights dreary, I know my Jesus cares. Here's the last verse. Does Jesus care when I've said goodbye to the dearest on earth to me and my sad heart aches till it nearly breaks. Is it nothing to him? Does he see? Oh yes, he cares, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief when the days are weary, the long nights dreary. I know my Saviour cares. David hasn't gone to the Hebrew commentary to give us some nice good quote David is speaking from where he has been and where he is at. He has seen it. He's experienced it for himself. The circumstances of life as if he was speaking here to us this morning into our world. Verse 17 says, He hears when his children call to him for help and he delivers them out of their troubles literally it means he snatches them out. In verse 17 and verse 19, he'll use the word deliver, meaning that God just comes and snatches us out. But in verse 18, when he rescues those who are crushed in spirit, he doesn't snatch us out. He actually walks us through. The brokenhearted means this. It's hearts that have been broken into pieces by life and by others. It means to be, have a breakdown. It means to be hurt. It means to be torn. It means pain. It means quenched. It means destroyed. It's a picture of being completely broken, a shattered heart. If something's broken, sometimes you can fix it and put it back together. When something is shattered, it's impossible. Only Jesus can mend a shattered heart. David says he's close to them. The word for crushed means to literally go back to the dust. It means destruction. It means to be squeezed. It means to be bruised. It means to beat to pieces like powder. And David said in the middle of those who are brokenhearted and crushed, crushed Yahweh the Lord is near, is close. Yeah. Many times in the Psalms, David will go, where are you, God? But here, David is telling us, when we can't see him, he is near, he is close. What happens is bitterness, betrayal, hurt, crushed spirits, loss, or even grief sometimes try to get us to run from God. Instead of running to him, we run to our caves. We run to something else to feel that pain. Grief plays out in so many areas of our life and come out in anger, emotions, addictions, bitterness. We react to what has happened to us. 
We run from God because sometimes we can't handle it instead of running to him. And David reminds us, the Lord is near, run to him. He rescues, he preserves, he defends, he avenges us in the middle. He doesn't pull us out, but he's near to us right in the middle of it. People will sometimes say to you, get over it and move on. But no, in the middle, he comes to us and preserves us and holds us. He comes to us to walk with us, to make us whole again. He breathes fresh hope into us. It's in the middle, as Pastor Beck said last week, it's in the middle of our breaking that we come to know who he is. We, are, we come to understand who he is, that he is good no matter what I go through. But if I never go through grief, if I never go through heartache, if I never go through pain, I never go through brokenness, how will I ever know him as a God who comes to love and preserve and mend and be with me? God who knows our pain. It's a beautiful verse. God in the Old Testament declares who he is. In Isaiah 57, he says this. Listen to what it says. It's obvious that this is God talking. For thus says the high and lofty one, the one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy places. God is establishing as if they didn't know, God's going to remind them four times who he is. I'm the high and lofty one. I inhabit eternity. My name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, but I also dwell with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. It's the same word that's used in Psalm 34, 18, meaning crushed. Listen to how the message translates it, because it's going to give us the exact description of this. A message from the high and towering God who lives in eternity, whose name is holy. I live in the high and holy places, but also with the low-spirited, the spirit crushed. And what I do is put a new spirit in them. I get them up on their feet again. Wow. The high and lofty God who's out in the everlasting comes from the everlasting to those that follow him, to those who love him, to his children. I'm high and lofty, I'm holy, that's no doubt. But I come to dwell with the contrite, the humble, the people who were crushed in spirit. Tell me what other God does that. He goes on in the next few verses we're not going to read. He tells them, I, am, I will not hold you off to court endlessly and I will not be angry with you forever. He says, I come to you to be with you, to be near you, to walk with you, to breathe fresh life into you, to put my spirit in you, to help you get back on your feet, to revive you and to repair you. It's a picture Pastor Beck reminded me of, of the shepherd when David says, the Lord is my shepherd. The shepherd in the daytime would walk in front of the sheep. Remember, we're not cattle, we're sheep. He doesn't drive us like cattle. He doesn't get behind us with a whip. He walks in front of the sheep and he calls them by name to follow him. But when it's dark, he doesn't stand out the front. He stands in the middle of the sheep so that they can know his presence and so they can hear his voice and that he can be with them. God says, I, the holy, holy and lofty high one, come and I come to dwell with you. Every person has places of brokenness, Pastor Steve Furtick says. Every person has places of brokenness. Know where your help is comes from we went through it a couple of weeks ago there's three different words for when when the psalmist uses the word deliver we just look 17 19 it says the helper comes and he snatches them out immediately that's what happens in salvation we are rescued we're born again out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light but at other times in verse 18 we wish he would snatch us out but he preserves us in the middle. I don't, we don't understand all that. 
I was reminded this week, I went up to see my mum. And where my mum and dad passed it, there was a, a lot of Aboriginal families, a lot of Aboriginal elders, uh, one whole family where they were very important. So one of the brothers, Bill, just passed away, I think, in his late 80s. They had a state funeral in the, the Newcastle Knights home football stadium. That's how big the uh, funeral was. It went for six hours. And so, but I remember his brother, Roy. Now, I've seen God do miracles in my life. I know God is real. I would have been about 12 or 13 when Roy was carried into our church on a blanket. He, he'd broken the bottom of his tailbone, literally screaming in agony. They carried him in on a blanket, laid him down on a mattress. They prayed for him, and he was instantly healed instantly healed. God snatched him out. About 10 years later, Roy got cancer. And God didn't snatch him out. But God preserved him. God held him. And God helped him and walked with him through what he was facing. I can't explain how God's going to do things. All I know is there's times he snatches us out. All I know is there's times he defends us and holds us. And there are times, as I said the other week, that then he arms us. We take the scripture of God. We take the armor of God. He gives us verses and scriptures, empowers us, engages us to walk through with the scriptures, to walk through as we do battle against the things we face. I don't eat fruit very much. It's not good for you. That's why I have this healthy looking body. Ice cream. You know. I, have, I just keep having this picture the last couple of weeks. And I, I don't have one here, but if I, if I had a peach here this morning and just left it here, by the time we come back next Sunday, it would start to be looking a bit and if you dropped it, it would be bruised. And if you put it out in the sun, it would go off very quickly. It's like a picture of life. But I remember my grandparents, my grandmothers, used to take those same peaches and preserve them and put them in a bottle and put some water and sugar and cinnamon and some apple cider vinegar in it and it would preserve the peach. In the middle of our heartache and brokenness and where times we're crushed, like the peach has been left out in the sun and dropped, he comes to preserve us and hold us. That's what he does for you, Gary. As you walk without your beautiful wife, and some days for you would be a lot harder than days for us, he preserves you, he holds you. Because the world and things would try and bruise us in. One is beaten, bruised, ready for nothing. The other is preserved from the elements around it. Sheila Waltz says, grief is the price we pay for love, for if we never loved, then there would be no grief, there would be no pain. So this morning, you may be here, and you suffered loss, or disappointment, or brokenness, or cross spirit. We don't have to define the word loss, do we? As soon as we say lost, we all know exactly what that means. Something has been taken from us. It can be the losses of a loved one while here today. Eileen Neary and those recently. It can be the loss of a friend. That can be very crushing. That can be very disappointing. It might be the loss of a marriage. Sickness can steal from us. It's like the loss of health. The loss of a relationship, the loss of family, the loss of job or employment or income, the loss just of position or status. Loss can be a circumstance, a situation. It may be something that you have owned and you've been entrusted with and you've lost it. Something maybe you were promised, something you thought was theirs. It could be your finances. It can be hope, promises. You had a hope for something and 
all of a sudden things have changed and so the date of you receiving that hope keeps moving down the track. Worship to me if you come this morning. In the middle of it, he comes to us to help us, to help us through. Again, what other God would do that? And he takes us through without any time limit attached to it. Because we're not here to judge what someone's walking through and they should be better now. That no. He takes us through whatever the time limit is and eventually he brings us to the other side. That other side might be heaven, as was in the case of Roy Smith. He says, Yahweh, David says, the Lord, our helper, the Lord is near. He comes to us. David says, he's not distant. He's not angry. He loves us. He comes to us. You know why? He remembers we're just but dust. We're sheep. And he comes close. And David reminds us from experience into 2021 that when sadness, brokenness, disappointment, discouragement overwhelm us, when we're crushed in spirit, when it looks like there's no way out, we have a great God. We have a mighty God who loves to come near to us and to hold us. Looks like I'm singing this morning. Just bring up that, just, just that frame, Rosie. The Lord is near. Just lift your hands before him as the worship team just sing this morning. He is near, the Lord is near, the Lord is near. He is near, the Lord is near. close to the broken hearted and he saves those crushed in spirit he is near my God he is near and he suffered loss in any area or something that has been disappointed has been broken to you and just stand where you are for a minute because we want to we want to gather around and pray with you this morning stand up Gary we're going to gather around you watching online, we're praying for you today, we're standing with you. If you see people standing this morning, can you just go, uh, just go stand with them this morning, I'm not asking for you to even pray some magic prayer, but just, just go stand with people this morning. We're supporting people this morning. To be lost. Maybe you're being crushed in spirit today. Maybe 
maybe something has happened or words that have been spoken that are going over over in your head and it's it's crushing you it's like bitterness to you this morning how else this morning to be ashamed of. We will all go through it. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes even in our loss and brokenness, it can be like just injustice, not just. And God wants to come to you this morning and just breathe fresh hope in you today. Thank you, Lord. We pray for Ron and Eileen today, Lord. Pray that you would just be present with them right where they are today and with their family. And as they come up to the, the mum's funeral this week, they'd be so aware that you are with them. You are close. You are close. You are close, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Keep singing, the Lord is near. He Thank you for your promise. You are close to the broken heart. You rescue those who are crushed in spirit. Thank you. That's our God. Thank you, Jesus. grab someone to give them a hug. I'm not too sure if you're allowed to uh, to do that, but bless you churches to go this morning.